This is 12.1 for Math 99, uh, the first part of the lecture, the A part, and we're going to talk about exponential growth. So exponential growth, uh, we are talking about things that are growing quickly. Uh, that word exponential means there's an exponent involved in the growth. Um, sometimes people describe stuff as, as growing quickly, like it's a really steep line is exponential. That's not exponential. Exponential growth um, has to have a very specific rate of change. Um, what I mean by that, like this is a steep line, but it's changing by addition. It's always changing by the same amount. And even if it's it's quadratic, you know, it goes over one, up one, over one, up three, over one, up five. Its rate of, of change is increasing, but this still is not growing exponentially. In order to grow exponentially, it has to change by multiplication. So for example, if I had um, something x, y, and let's just start at one, and y is two, and then at the next x, y is at four, and then the next one, it's at eight, and the next one, it's at 16. You can see that it's, it's doubling each time. It's times two each time. That sort of growth is exponential growth. So notice that this equation would be y equals two, to the x power. So for example, this third one to get to this eight, this was two to the third power. And remember um, an, an exponent with that, one way to think about an exponent is, this is that base two multiplied by itself three times. So you could think of this as two times two times two. Three twos all multiplied together. This one would be four twos all multiplied together. So um, exponential growth in a table, it, we can see this change right here as multiplication. In an equation, our variable is in the is in the exponent. So the variable is up here in the exponent. That's that'll make it exponential. This is great. I have this table. It's uh, going up by two each time. Um, what would happen when x is zero? So in other words, two to the zeroth power looks like it's two to the zeroth power. Um, some people feel like it should be zero, and I think intuitively that kind of makes sense. But if you think about this pattern still going on, times two each time, times two times two times two, um, if you undo that pattern, that would be dividing by two. 16 divided by two is eight. Eight divided by two is four. So two divided by two is one. So actually, if I were to graph this, this goes through the point zero, one, and then it goes like this. And every time this goes over by one, this gets twice as high. And I'm gonna I'm gonna graph something like that on Desmos. So let's take a peek at this graph. There it is right there. I'm gonna bring that over to here. So there's that point zero one. So two to the zeroth power is one. And this is true for anything except zero to the zeroth power. So basically a to the zeroth power not the eighth power, <laughs> a to the zeroth power is one. As long as a doesn't equal zero, zero to the zero is undefined. Uh, we, can't, we can't resolve it, absolutely. So there's that, and then notice this is the point one, two, this is the point two, four, this is the point three, eight. So this height right here is two, and notice if we go over one, that height gets doubled, right? Like times two. And if we go over one again, that height gets doubled. So this base, this two, tells us something about how it's growing. It's, uh, it's doubling each time. Now, if we go the opposite way, remember I said um, going this way would be division, divide by two. So now if I go back one from here, and divide by two and I get back to negative one, well, one divided by two is, is one half. And if I go back another one to negative two, half of a half is one fourth. If I go back another one to negative three, half of a fourth is one eighth. And notice it's gonna get closer and closer to zero and never actually touch it. These fractions just get smaller and smaller. So we do have an asymptote right here that is the, that is the x-axis. So again, as it goes over one, its height is going to double from the last height. And as it goes back, it's halving. We have an asymptote. 
here at y equals 0. It gets closer and closer to it and never actually touches it. So let's graph a couple other things. So if y to the 2x doubles each time, uh, y equals 3 to the x triples each time. Notice how 0, 1, and then this is the point. I'll, I'll just throw the points on here. Uh, 1, 3. And then the next point then would be 2, 9, twice as high, which is going off here. These things grow fast. If I zoom out, they, they almost look like they're straight up really quick. That is exponential growth. That, that is something that's growing super, super fast. So another thing I want to do is make another sketch of a graph. What I had y equals 2 to the negative x. So notice what's going on with this negative x is I'm doing it inside of the function. Um, that means I'm going to have a function in this direction. In other words, if I, if I try and plug in like 3 to this, y is going to be 2 to the negative 3. 2 to the third is 8, so this is 1 8. So what this negative do, does, I'm going to draw 2 to the x, is it reflects it this way. You know, like this value that was 3, it's plugged in as a negative 3. So what actually happens, instead of going like that, it goes like this. So it's that graph right there. So as it goes over 1, it gets um, half as big as it was each time. And both of these go through the point zero, 1. That's a really good way to think about like how these get centered. Um, if there's no multiplier, like it's not times something out in front of it, it's always going to go through 0, 1. Let me sketch another graph. So we will sketch how about y equals 4 to the negative x. So it's going to go through 0, 1. Whoops, it's going to go through the point 0, 1. When x is 1, it's going to be down here at a fourth. But then back here, if you come back 1, it's going to be way up here at 4. So it's pretty steep coming down like that. Let me do a couple of graphs like this. So here is uh, y equals 2 to the x. Here is y equals... Um, 3 to the x. We've already looked at something like this. It's a little bit steeper. Um, y equals 4 to the x. going to be even steeper. Zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. So I could even have something like uh, y equals 2.5 to the x. And notice it's here between the y equals 3 to the x and y equals 2 to the x. Um, I can I can make these smaller and smaller. I'm going to get rid of some of these. In other words, I could have y equals 1.5 to the x. To the x. Still goes to that point zero one, but it's just not growing as fast. But eventually, it starts to grow very fast. That's what exponential growth does. You know, I, I could even do something smaller than 1.5, uh, 1.2 or 1.1, and it looks like it's almost a straight line, but if you zoom out on this, eventually it starts to grow super fast. Again, that's what exponential growth will do. We could do this same with a negative. So like I said, the two to the negative x is just the reflection across the y-axis of, of two to the x. And um, I'm gonna turn that off, and notice if I, if I do um, y equals three to the negative x, it's going down faster, right? Like it's shrinking faster. Um, interestingly, this two to the negative x, it's gonna be the same graph as um, one half to the power of x. Oops. They're the exact same graph. And um, notice why that is. If you think back to what negative, uh, negative exponents mean, 2 to the negative x, like if I had 2 to the negative 3 power, that's 1 over 2 cubed. This negative is the same, this is the same as writing, um, the negative sends it down to the denominator and makes it like that. So those are the same, same thing.
let's just do a little bit of evaluation with these. So let's say that um, f of x is uh, is 2 to the x and uh, g to the x is 3 to the x. Um, you know, and it, the, the book's going to ask questions like f plus g of 3. And you know how to do that. Plug, plug 3 in for f, 2 cubed. Plug 3 in for x, 3 cubed. Uh, 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. You can do that on your calculator and then add those together and keep going. So let me show you a little something on your calculator. So I'm going to assume that you have a, uh, a, a TI. And to take things to a power, it's this button right here, this, um, this caret button. So for example, if I wanted to go 5 to the second power, I could go 5 squared. I could also go 5 to the power of 2. It's 25. So if I want to go 5 to the third power, 5 to the third power. So that uh, that's kind of nice to have. So like on the last problem, I wanted to go um, 2 to the third plus 3 to the third. And it can uh, it can spit out my answer for me. So um, make sure you know how to use that. That caret button is a great tool to have. Well, that's it for the first part of exponential growth. Uh, let me know what questions you have, and good luck. Good luck with the problem.